I've done some work since the last uh, clip here. One of my big problems was this big uh, wire nut I had here with about oh, half a dozen or more wires going into it. Um, well, plus the main neutral goes into it too. So it just physically is never going to work too well. Um, you know, you saw the mess it was. So I installed this barrier strip instead. Well, not a barrier strip, just a uh, bus bar type strip. Normally this is used inside of fuse backs. And so I put all these neutral wires into this thing and I actually used all the holes. I got one hole free for the main wire to come in. I'm going to have to double up this other wire for another wire i got to add yet too. Um, to go to an external outlet. I reconditioned the relay. It was in better shape than I thought it was. So I cleaned the contacts and um, found better screws for the ones that were burned up. Found two good ones for this side. Clean these guys up a little bit too. Um, this here's actually a 12 volt little power pack. I found my little 12 volt brick I used to use along with this project is fried. So I stashed a little tiny 12 volt switching power supply. It's actually one amp rated right into the unit which allows me to use the uh, old relay, 120 volt relay uh, contact power to drive this power supply. And this is going to drive the new relays. Um, and there's going to be another interruption in this cable, you know, for some so some smarts to control the... Uh, this is the heater relay, by the way. And this is the pump relay. So, a lot of progress, a lot of work. This strip is actually not mounted directly to the uh, wall here. It's mounted with insulated uh, washers. So that this is not this is not directly connected to the uh, grounded chassis because this is an electrical box. This is a uh, I don't really want my neutral and ground together at this point because um, I'm afraid it might interfere with how the GF GFCI he you knows working. Maybe changing my loop or shortening my loop or unprotecting part of the loop. So this is actually floating, you know, neutral. And that's about it. The jumpers that held up really well from previous experience were the ones that I soldered. I crimped them and then I soldered them. And uh, these have held up perfectly well. They haven't overheated or done anything funky. So I'm probably going to make this jumper soldered too. I know this frowned upon I mean, most 120 volt wiring to solder anything. But in this instance, uh, with the exposure to the elements, somewhat, uh, there's always going to be moisture involved here is what I'm trying to say. So as long as I don't make a cold solder connection, I think I'm better off soldering these. And that's what I'm going to do. So you want to really avoid doing a cold solder connection on one of these. You know, that make it that'd be worse than that, having any kind of... Uh, solder there at all. If it was cold, it would just it'd be worse than just having a raw crimp letting corrosion do its thing. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for some kind of flux. Which I have a couple different types. I'm going to use this old stuff. Old Radio Shack Special from Unknown Decades. Great stuff. Fluxes. If you don't have flux, you're missing out. It makes soldering so much easier and so much better. So and that's gonna be plenty of flex. Away for now. Actually I could use it on the tip here as excess. All right, so what I really need to do here is not make a mess of this connector because then it won't fit on the uh, spade lug very well, but I do have to heat it nice and hot. So I wetted my tip just a little bit 
and I'm just going to let it sit here until it gets warm enough to actually melt from this side, I hope. And if I can get it warm enough this way, then I will not make a cold tighter joint. Oh, what a pain. I also ended up changing out the relay uh, heat sink that I had planned for a more conventional heat sink. It's probably a little bit under what I need, a little bit short of what I need. That's why I have these clamps kind of rigged that way. Maybe they'll give me a little more area. I'm also going to try to use the bottom of the heat sink, you know, bolt it right onto the chassis. To, um, to put a little bit of heat into the chassis. And that 12 volt power supply is just going to turn these on. This is in series. Heavy uh, new wires. All replaced. Pretty much done with everything now. I've even gone through the low voltage wiring. The remnants of my attempts at it, one of the circuits. Uh, to control this thing, which I'm really not using right now. I did have to power this up though because I want to make the 5-volt uh, regulator on here um, still put out 5 volts and because uh, there's a temperature sensor on this unit that I'm uh, sending 5, five volts to. I also want to hook up these uh, DPMs again pretty soon. That's going to be a project in itself. I never got this working quite right when I added the second meter to it. There's some kind of complication. And I don't know how I really left that. That was years ago now. So anyway, I want to be as ready for that as possible. I want to be as ready for the future of this project as possible. Even though right now it's going to be a dumb project. It's just going to turn on and off. Uh, the heater, that is, is going to turn on and off with X10. And uh, that's it for right now. But at least I'll have the power part of it done. And I can move on to probably putting um, uh, an AT Tiny or a Arduino board, you know, to control. Make it more a little bit more intelligent. And how it controls the uh, heat and everything. Because the basic issue is you need the water to circulate long enough before you judge the temperature of it. And um, then you can accurately judge the temperature and heat or not heat. So, I got the relays in at an angle just to make everything fit. This one could have gone straight, but it has to really be forced in there. The original, originally they did, but I let it relax a little because it makes it easier to get to this relay anyway. This relay is angled so I can get this switch just enough clearance for that switch. So the first time in a long time I'm able to close this box up. And this little circuit, like I said, I rewired it. I even put an LED across where it would normally turn a relay on if it was working. Just because I don't even know if the circuit even has any... We don't know the status of the circuit at this point. So, like I said, I'm not using that to control the relays. I'm just uh, hooked it up for fun and giggles and to get that 5-volt regulator working so I can get my temperature sensor working so I can eventually get my DPMs working. Ugh. Never-ending projects. And to help me with that process, I need to get this project back in line next, which is where I uh, had these meters outside, these DPMs outside. One showing the temperature of the hot tub, one showing the ambient temperature. I never had the ambient temperature thing working. It should be a real easy thing to do though. But somehow when I slaved that in and redid the whole thing, I never got it working again. Because for a long time I did, I did have the uh, hot tub temperature posted for a long time. And then uh, something happened with that and I was going to redo everything and 
make it more fancy and I never got that finished. Sometimes projects get kind of a momentum, you know, you lose the momentum to them and it gets real hard to start again. So that's kind of what I've been facing on this project. Is uh, I rigged it, got it working, and it went years that way instead of really finishing the project. So now my goal is to have just the power wiring done and, you know, nice, good, solid base to work on. And then my eventual goal is to control this with an Arduino or a AT Tiny, probably, actually. But we'll see how it goes, how much sophisticated the program gets. So it's about ready to go outside and give it the smoke test. It's going to take quite a bit of time to install it, though. It's quite a, jo quite a chore. I need to lower the entropy of this place. Anyways, after some struggles and some failures, um, basically I installed the control unit back in the hot tub and I got crickets when I tried turning it on. Didn't even get crickets, I got silence. Uh, but then, after doing some troubleshooting, I realized the relay was getting its control voltage. And the you know on the uh, these are where the control voltages get to the coil. This is the burned up one, obviously. Um, I was getting voltage there, but the relay wasn't activating. So I said, "Oh, I cleaned up that relay, and I quote quote reconditioned it. You know, cleaned up all the contacts and all that for nothing. The relay's dead. Uh, so I pulled out the relay." without removing the whole control unit, pull it out of the control unit, which is kind of a pain to do, you know, when it's installed, but it's about a three-hour job to remove and to reinstall. Um, well, probably two hours for each way. At any rate, when I was brushing the uh, contacts on the one I put back in uh, with a wire brush, I broke a little tiny wire that uh, comes off the coil and it's soldered to the uh, contact and I broke it right in there so I had to scrape off a little bit of stuff and put some uh, flux on it and solder it up and then reinstall it and now it is working that's all together I may still end up putting this solid state relay back in I'm going to mount it vertically instead of horizontally um, in place of the uh, mechanical relay in some future time I'm probably going to end up doing that. We'll see. Because um, this one, it all depends what I want to do with controls. And I'm, I'm thinking about how much do I want to control. Do I want to control the relays with the Arduino as well as everything else? Do I want to leave the relays more or less fail safe? Uh, less controlled? There's advantages either way. Another thought on the project is that instead of using these relays in pairs to switch the L1 and the L2, I could just switch one side and not even switch the other side. You know, switch the L2 and not the L1 or vice versa. Because the uh, heating element in 240 volt setup is uh, doesn't have any neutral, neutral connection at all. It's strictly uh, L1 to L2. And pretty much the pump is too, I want to say. I'm not sure about that. That's a good question. Yeah, you know, as far as the first one goes, I probably do need to use two. Didn't think about the pump. Interesting thoughts. Certainly for the heater relay, I could go down to one relay. And actually I did that before with my earlier circuits that I was attempting on this thing. Although mostly I had this relay controlling the uh, contactor relay instead of using you know using it to switch the power directly at that point way back when, but I could. It's one of these could switch power directly for the heater all by itself or in a pair. It really wouldn't matter. I'm, I'm of course putting less stress across the unit, you know, with half the voltage 
Switching 120 instead of 240. 